Hi everyone. Am I audible? Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you are audible. Good evening. Okay. Uh, the very very few participants are today. We wait for a few minutes. Okay. Sorry, sir. We wait for a few minutes for some other part participants. Oh. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Suresh Kumar ji is there, Radha Krishna ji, Rimi, Suman, and Tarun. Nikita, Pehwa, and uh, Sri Nivasan ji is about to come. And Aditya is also, also not there today. Pratik Sukla is not there. Sir, meanwhile, just I wanted to ask one one thing, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, in uh, in R, uh, have you done this uh, meta analysis, sir? Because just I'm interested. So, if you can give some tips, uh, you know that would be beneficial for me, sir, uh, for all of us. Okay, I I have done one meta analysis. Okay, sir. Uh, I think I should have that here. Uh -huh. I just look at. Okay, sir. I have done this. I just pick up the yes. script and then mm, this is not that script. It is other. I have done it. I, I have that. Uh, I have done yes, for sir. some research paper. Acha, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. So I will so share. Can, yeah, so yeah. I, I will share with you. Don't worry. Acha, sir. That has been published. I think that. So no problem. I could share the script and the data. Okay, sir. There is a few things which should be. We have a few parameters we have to consider should be same in the meta analysis in the all research uh -huh. papers. Uh -huh. So we could compare them. Acha, sir. Then we would finalize uh, yeah. the, the, okay, the, 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 the because the, the, if so many people had done uh, the research on the same topic, mm, yeah, and in the same geographic condition also. So why yes, we should sir. take the other one more? So we do the yeah. meta analysis. Okay, so uh, we collect all the research papers and then we see the variables and then we do it. So, I have done it. Acha, yeah, definitely you might have done because you know I thought okay if uh, that is possible in R, mm. some tricks and you know some clue if you can give then you know we can try to do for. No, no, I, I will, I will give that total thing because I, I have done so many. Uh, I have done for more than fifteen, twenty days. I have worked on it. Acha, sir, okay, Not only okay. for one or two, two days work. I worked, I, I read so many things about the meta analysis and so okay. many things. Uh, in which area, sir, you have worked on uh, the meta analysis? Uh, it is, um, I, I forget because uh, I, I, I have so many works in the analysis. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Still, I am an analyzing two or three projects of the PhD, yeah. basically. Oh, okay. The statistical sir. analysis in the psychology and uh, so. I have completed more than 350 PhD. Wow. Uh, oh, analysis. great. Yeah. <laughs> so, there are so many. So, I, I, I it is impossible to remember. Uh, the yes, analysis. yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. 
today we will start sir that uh, extreme gradient boost algorithm okay sir which uh, which is the we could say that uh, assemble modeling assemble uh, assemble uh, algorithm which uh, boost the model what we prepare okay for it is based on the decision tree algorithm so we start that today we just wait for five more minutes so we see how many can yeah yeah yes sir yeah. sir yeah uh, artificial neural network is possible in r or only in python neural network is possible in r also no problem you could learn in r learn in r then uh, apply, in apply in python so in the r you could better learn it in in some cases stata is also helpful as i have done in stata stata but not in uh, what uh, please stata, you stata. loudly ha huh? in stata kaun sa stata s t a t a statistical software stata no 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 i i i have not done that so no, i i have done that stata but uh, okay, nice, not nice. in r okay, hmm. not in r so i am just asking is this possible in r or not is, is in stata hmm. no 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 stata no r r it is possible i have but done some neural networking I have so done one image required? classification model. Which package? Hmm? Which uh, on which package it is there? The, so I just uh, find for the, the image classification. I have used uh, OpenCV. No, no, no. There, there is the, no, not no. in R. There is some other library like uh, mm -hmm. EBImage. 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 Ha, huh, for the image classification model, mm -hmm. image uh, related. Mm -hmm. If we are uh, just network preparation or anything. Hmm. So image pre-processing everything could be done through the EB image. Open CV is in the Python. Uh, open CV Python. Oh, yeah. Here in the R, that is the EB image. Okay. And uh, I have not worked on the chatbot yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not worked on the chatbot with R. I worked on the chatbot with Python. I think. Uh, Let's start the session. It's uh, almost seven thirty, and uh, first I would like to explain what is gradient boost algorithm. It is basically a boosting technique. Uh, I just write here. gradient boosting yeah. it is a boosting technique and uh, i give you one example for this i will just explain how it works we will not go in the math of this gradient boosting okay uh, that is in uh, very depth so the participants who are not mathematicians could not understand that thing okay so we just uh, see how does it work uh, we not go in the math in math uh,
uh, in the first column i am taking the experience experience in the second column i am taking the education or the degree i could write the degree in the third column is a salary and salary is my dependent variable target variable which is why uh, this is my x1 and x2 you could say that okay uh, i want to make a decision tree model on this so suppose i will make a decision tree model first and i will get some output out of this now suppose i have the data the two year experience is there someone has two year experience and the degree we could say that the b and the salary we could say that the 50000 similarly we have three years experience with masters and uh, the salary is 70000 about and uh, fifth is uh, oh, sorry experience is five year and uh, the degree is masters again and here the salary is 80k and uh, someone has experienced six years and the, his phd and the experience is oh sorry salary is 100k one lakh now we find out some output here in the decision tree and uh, this is the base basic decision tree we could say okay the basic dt and here we get some output you know, which is the y cape which is the y cape and this output we get here suppose we get here 70 uh, uh, suppose we take some constant over here we take some constant uh, like uh, we could measure the constant I am putting some constant here. Okay, the basic decision tree we are getting some and we write here. Oh, here we take the base model. Output we could say that the something near about 75. I take the mean of this. Okay, I get the mean of this. Here, hypothetically, I am taking, but basically, we will get out of this. Okay. So, if we calculate the mean, then 50 plus 70 plus 80 plus 100 and divided by 4 so we get 120 200 300 it is now about 75 so here hypothetically i am writing here 75 400. Then I will see the residual. But this is our first residual. A residual is what? A residual is a error that is the y minus y cube. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? Yes, sir. So this is the k already. Okay. We don't write, don't mind. So if we see here is minus 25, we could say that minus. Uh, 25 is there here we see it is uh, minus 5 only here is plus 5 and here we see it is uh, 25 plus this residual we are make, getting now we make one decision tree which is dt1 for us here we are making one another decision tree and the target variable is our not y. Here the target variable is R1. Does that make sense to everyone? And the independent variables are experience and the degree. Is that, does that make sense to everyone? No? Yes. And we get the output R2. Here we get the output R2, which is the predicted of R1, prediction of R1. Here you see it is 23, it is minus 3, it is something like 2, 
or three we could write it is 20 so you see there the deviation will decrease if we go to our here r3 we make another one in this way we will uh, make uh, this and this deviation will decrease you see there are minus 25 here minus 23 minus 5 minus 3 so deviation is decreasing so the deviation will decrease it means we will get the more accuracy in the model and uh, we generalize the model and the generalization model what is the main two things one is the low variance there should be low variance and low bias these two parameters are always in the generalization of the model so in this way we uh, give some iterations to it and we find it okay so this is the basic concept behind our uh, gradient boosting algorithm i i am not going in deep the mathematics is very very in depth mathematics over there okay so does that make sense to how does it work it is based on the decision tree okay yes sir you could apply on the linear model also but uh, you will put here the uh, residuals then it will apply and then then it will be a decision tree model that's make sense to you first you solve through the linear regression okay and the linear regression you will get the y cap y hat and then you find out y minus y hat that is would be our r1 and then we apply this algorithm and we boost our this model does that make sense to everyone yes yeah so but uh, please repeat the last idea what can you repeat the last idea about the linear regression? Uh, uh, regression analysis uh, is uh, not in this workshop. Uh, I, no, I, know, I know. No, no, the last idea why, when, you, when you were talking about R1, we do the first the linear regression and calculate the R1, and then we go and we do the gradient boosting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. First, we find out this y cap through the linear regression, you know, prediction of y. This y we have, and uh, we get this y cap through the linear regression, and then we get the residuals, and then we apply this gradient boosting. So further, it will improve our performance of the linear regression model. Too. Does that make sense to everyone? And this apply on both uh, the classification or the linear uh, or the regression model. If either it is the decision tree or the random forest or the logistic. So let's we see uh, how does this algorithm work and what libraries we use. Uh, let's we have a requirement of the library XGBoost first and uh, uh, Magritte and uh, Dplyr is for the data manipulation. There is a matrix. Uh, we have to prepare for that. So there is a matrix library is also there. Some matrix calculations are there. No, not the calculation, the matrix we have to prepare, then we can do some matrix calculation over here. So first I will show you. As you proceed. Uh, extreme gradient boosting training uh, xgb.tran is a model 
uh, our the syntax, basic syntax, and uh, is an advanced interface of the training and XGBoost model. The XGBoost function is simpler wrapper of the XGB dot train. So this is the thing, the list and parameters, everything you will get here uh, because there are so many parameters and a few of them I will explain, but not all. So you could read here, read here. And the second, I would like to tell you about the second library, MAGRI, Migrator. And look at this, the Migrator package offers a set of operations which are more semantic that will improve your code by the structuring sequence of data operation left to right. Yeah? as opposed to the from inside to out and avoiding nested functions calls and the minimizing the need for local variables and function definition making it easy to and the forward pipe operator t operator and uh, we compound assignment pipe operator and exposing exposition pipe operator so we see this we will apply some and the matrix, uh, you know that it is for the matrix basically. Construction of matrix. Contest a class matrix and uh, how we could create a matrix and then this we have read in the uh, R foundation. But that was the R base matrix. Uh, there is a data set I have a binary dot CSV which I will share with you and uh, I read this data first there are the 400 observations and four variables there is a admit GRE GPA and rank the admission uh, will be get or not get and a zero for not uh, getting the admission one for getting the admission GRE is the great uh, GRE score sorry not GRE score the 380 and 660 and 800 and the, the GPA 3.61 is the and the rank of the school or the college we are is studying present so that is uh, from where he he is coming and what he will get in this institute or not so that is the data set we have we have the five four variables and our target variable is admit it is a classification problem so because zero and one we could apply the logistic regression also we could apply the decision tree we could apply the random forest here and uh, i will show you the structure of this and you see this structure is we have admit is a zero and one four variables 400 observations gre is an integer and the numeric is an integer rank we have one variable which is the integer but if we see the unique of range unique of range we are getting only four rings so only one two three four it is a discrete basically so whenever we get the discrete uh, i have explained you we have converted them in factor so we are converting these in factor And uh, now I partition the data first. Before pre-processing, we should have to partition the data. Uh, and for partition, I am using set seed and I am partition in 80%, 20%. So I will get the training data 325 observations for variables and 75 observations for the test. Now I will create one matrix. Here I will use this library. And uh, one hot encoding for factors, factor variables I want to do. So I will use uh, spears dot model matrix. And admit is my target variable tilde dot admit tilde dot minus one minus one why i am taking here for this admit 
because I am making a matrix I don't want to use this data train and this is the train matrix train M and if I show you this train M head of this so you will see I will get it is the one hot encoding I am doing for this so with this minus one is for what can someone explain what I have, why I have taken minus one sir uh, it will remove the uh, first column out of the data data frame that is admit because right. it's a target variable correct okay so you see there is no admit column and i have done encoding one hot encoding of four categories we had and the column rank so it is the rank one rank two rank three rank four so here you see this uh, school or the college is the rank one and uh, it will not be in other three and if it is only you will get the one in one of the column only and uh, now I will create one target variable train underscore label I am giving the name and the train is our uh, training data set and I am just selecting the admit and the all rows so it is my target variable I have created now no I will make one matrix uh, for that uh, <coughs> FGB uh, D matrix I will use here and uh, train underscore matrix I am going to make data is dot uh, as dot matrix train nm train nm you know that this one and the label is train label label is train label so I run this and uh, You will see that uh, trend matrix if we see the head of this. Okay, it is to not so it is uh, the error. Sir, so that admit variable needs to be factored or it can be integer also I mean uh, uh, so far we have uh, converted it into factor all the target variables yeah so here we did not uh, convert that into factor admit variable hmm. so do we have to uh, convert that just before so. doing just, just. I have not run this one. It is an integer class at present. Up to now because we are taking in the matrix first. Okay. TSTM matrix we have made or not? The error, simple error evaluating the argument against that the matrix on size is the matrix of the TSTM. TSTM we have done or not? We have done here. Okay, okay, okay. I have to run this one first now. We are working on the test. Huh? First, we have to work on this. 
and it will not show because and, uh, then we do this and, uh, and here we are using only the parameter aditya we will take the two two classes only the number of classes we will take here okay and we get the probability over the so n c is okay, not so yeah so length of the unique train label the train label what we have taken that is the train label i explained you these are the train label test label or the train label we have in this way what i am taking only the length of the unique link train Does that make sense to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And the XG, uh, the some parameters we are adjusting. The XGB underscore params I am writing here. At least I am giving the objective. The multi soft probe. If you search here, you will get these all options over there. Evolution matrix M block loss, and the number of class is N C. Okay. If you run this N C, you will get the two. First, I run this, and I run this. You will get the two only. Okay. And then I run this. In the watch list, I am writing here. That is the trend, trend matrix, test, test matrix. Why I am writing this? When I apply the gradient boosting model, then I will get some iterations over here. So I want these results in every iteration. Okay, watch this. This thing I want. So I now apply the extreme gradient boosting mod. Uh, taking the set say the best model i am going to apply it is not a best model basically the best model will come later the params i am using there is a para there is a attribute params so these are my parameters parameters and the data is trend matrix and rounds 100 rounds i want 100 times the presence i required watch list with the watch list Okay, and I run this. You see, it's very fast. It will work, and it will show me the train M log loss is this is the loss. This is the some some sort of error we are getting. The point five nine here we are getting point six five. Here we are getting this much, this much. Okay, so it is the train and test we are getting this. And uh, now I would like to draw a error plot, and the uh, key I have taken for this, and I am making a data frame for the PSP underscore model and evaluation underscore log. Meters, what we are taking, attributes, everything we will get over here. And uh, I am taking this e, and uh, I plot this. And this is my train M log loss to the error. And it is decreasing if I increasing the iteration. Okay. And I want to know for the test also that it is the uh, like overfitting. If I use my test data, so I am getting only this. It is going here and it is going up. It is not coming this way. It is the overfitting model. 
and uh, I want to see here what is the minimum value in the test date. Loss value, minimum loss. So if I see, I will get the five nine zero five nine five zero nine six. I have written here the right thing. So I will copy this and paste here the which uh, iteration this value has. Okay, we have the iteration. So I want to have the which iteration this has. So you see here it is a uh, iteration. Not showing me the iteration. It is not showing me. Yes, if I choose a number. So I set the learning rate to 0.1, then I will see again what happens. But it is not giving me the equation, which equation it is. The value should be here, why it is not writing, I don't know. And uh, again, I am doing the same thing with uh, the default learning rate is 0.3. We are taking 0.1 and it will. Uh, Decrease the overfitting and uh, again I plot this. You will see it is now improved little bit. The overfitting is now it is okay. We are getting some here. And uh, now I am again decreasing this for uh, decrease the overfitting learning rate. I am decreasing again. I will see the, it is now in this way and I want to know the minimum is what here. So minimum is 597642 and if I find it is the 35th iteration, the minimum is here uh, which is something 35th. Okay. So I am writing in the end rounds 35 instead of this in the and uh, Eta is 0 0.05 again, the same, and not changing the. And I want to see again this plot. You see it. So now, the feature importance I want to know. Okay. The importance of the feature, which, which feature is more important, which is less important. So, this is the XGB dot importance, column names, trend matrix, and model this. And then I print this importance. You see the GPS is the more important. And the gain you see here. Then the GRE um, and the rank is uh, and then this and then this and this. And uh, importance is like this. And uh, I will plot this. So we get this plot GPS higher importance. Same values plots we are getting. And uh, now I want to predict with the test data, test matrix, new data is the test matrix. And uh, I show you the head. Um, you see it is the head of the prediction. And uh, I would like to show you the head of test data also. How many values I am getting here? Six values. But this is little different because we have got this through the matrix. And here it is uh, the 
for your zero and this is for one yes no and yes no and yes no and yes the probability of no and the probability of yes probability of no and probability of yes. probability of no and yes. so this is the prediction only for three variables three uh, observations so these three observations uh, prediction we have got this does that make sense to everyone yeah Yes. This is not like that. What we have done, it is not the this is for one, this for this. No, there is the no yes, no yes, no yes. These the three entries we have in pair. If you uh, if you add this, you will get one. If you add this two, you will get one. If you add these two, you will get one. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Sir. I show you. If I add these and these, I will get. I just copy this, and I write here. Then plus. Then I copy this. I write here, and then I enter. What I am getting? One. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. We have a different approach. For the extreme gradient boosting, it is the simplest one. What I find, okay. And uh, here it is for no first. So you see the higher uh, probability is a point eight nine. So it is no, it is zero. Correct. Does that make sense to everyone? In the second also, you see it is point seven three. It is the higher side. It is no. Okay, correct. That one is also point seven eight. It is correct. Does that make sense to everyone? Now I want some because I want to convert this. I, in this way, I could not make a confusion matrix. Can I make the confusion matrix for this? I have eight hundred observe in in the training data set. Uh, sorry, it is a training or testing testing data set. Testing data set. I have one fifty observations. You know that in the one fifty observations, I have this in the testing data set. I have the seventy five observations, and I am getting the one fifty value in the p. Does that make sense to everyone? Double value I am getting because we have seen no both, so I have to arrange this in a proper form so I could. Use this in uh, confusion matrix, or I could see the accuracy and the misclassification. So I am making a matrix uh, with this P. Number of row is two, and row is four. N C N C is we have to. If I run only N C, then you will get to two. Okay. And number of column length P divided by N C. P P is one fifty divided by two would be seventy five again. You get the seventy five. Does that make sense to you? So you will get the number of uh, column seventy five and number of row two. Then we transpose it. So what will happen at present? You are getting two rows, you know, no and yes, and columns. You are getting through this formula, seventy-five columns. You are getting, which is the observations, results, output. Does it make sense to everyone? Is there any doubt? Yes, sir. Then we are transposing it. So when we transpose, this will come here. Seventy-five observations will be here. One, two, and up to seventy-five. Got this? And no n yes will here. Does that make sense to everyone now? Okay. Is there any doubt? Then I convert this in data frame. 
is there any doubt now after converting i add on few more columns here okay what column i will add i will explain I am adding one column label, which is the test label, the new column. I mutate. Mutation is the new column, and one more column max probability, maximum probability, maximum column probability. I want to give the which column you have the maximum probability. The first column or the second column, first column or the second column, whatever has the probability. then it will write over there so i am taking here minus one. if i run this then you could better understand so i just clear this and uh, now i show you the head of this no this thing predict This. this is the data frame now so you see this is my x1 this is no this is yes does that make sense to you or this is the test data label data actual these are the actual these are the actual and these are the predicted because i have used this one next probability this one so what it is doing this one is greater maximum is this so it will write here zero or no it will for zero and it will for one if this one is maximum we will get one you see that this one is maximum so we are getting one here does it make sense to you okay here you see this one is maximum we are getting one here again is there any doubt yeah so the in um, max dot call function what is that last Uh, in last, your... uh, huh. this is the kind of attributes we have to use for the maximum probability. I want to know that which one has maximum probability. So maximum column yes, dot yes. Um, comma and the last yeah. minus one. Okay, so it will give me here the number is for that. Okay. 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 So this is the attribute I have taken. Isn't this? And then uh, you will search. Then you could get it. Uh, I have not get in here in their help. I have I have got this to the internet. When I stuck here, then I search it. What should I do for that? This sort of activity. So I could use some more okay, also. Okay. Some conditional also I could apply. Uh, but uh, yes, yes, yes. I, we could apply some other thing also, but I I given this I have got it easy. Okay, someone has used this one. No problem. So when we search something in the net and the um, give us the stack and this all, I know. So I have got from there. No problem. We could no use problem. some conditional also. No problem there. But the uh, purpose you got what we are getting. Okay. so yes, this you know that uh, it is actually it is one and our uh, it actually label is one it is one it is the uh, right but this one is one and our prediction is zero so it is a misclassification basically or not if it is same then it is okay okay actual and prediction is same then it is okay here the actual and prediction is not same so it is misclassification does that make sense to you Yes. Okay. So let's we see. 
the table of this i will make a confusion matrix table here now so is the table actually is no and our prediction is also no that is the 43 observation actually no and my prediction says yes that is the same this is a misclassification actually is yes and our prediction says no it is 18 that is the misclassification actually is yes and our prediction is also yes that is same does that make sense to you So now we see the accuracy. Accuracy is sum of the diagonal tab and sum of tab. The accuracy we are getting here is point six six. Okay. Now I change some parameters again. Here, what I have taken previous, I have taken eta. Point zero five, and this is thirty five. Now I'm converting eta point zero one, point zero five. I'm doing less this again, and here I am taking two hundred, and the maximum depth is three, gamma is zero, sub sample is one. The complete sample I am taking. I'm not removing any of the observations. All observations I want to use. Call sample by tree one. The missing is any, and set seed is required here. And I run this. There are the two hundred, and I see this. And uh, I plot this. You see, it is. I think that uh, it is too much. It is going up. So I think here something it would be. The minimum value. So I am taking one forty. So I have taken there one forty. I will see when here I will get that. Okay. Uh, first I take the two hundred. Then I will take that figure. Okay. Uh, I will show you the minimum value. What is? So I will see which iteration it has. It is the one one zero four. So one zero four it has. So I could write the one zero four here. No need to go for four hundred. The one zero four is the minimum. Then it is increasing now. It is the one zero four. I am getting minimum data, and I will run this. And, and uh, that is the last one. One zero four. Again, if I run this, this is the prediction I gave. I am taking. And you get the same one, and I am playing the same uh, syntax which I have used here. Now I will show you the accuracy. Accuracy increases or decreases? Previously, it was point zero point six. It's now point seven zero. So you see here also we have got. So in this way, we could increase the accuracy. We could increase the or so this is the extreme boost algorithm. It works in this way, and uh, you could take one thousand also here. And could not change much more, but if I show you the plot, will like this. It is not useful. It is decreasing here. No need to take that much iteration. It is not required. It will go up. It will not go down. Okay. So that is one zero four is my best. One zero four iteration is the best one which I am getting here. And uh, 
I go with this expiration. After that, you know that that is the time zone zero six. This is for me. So this is the uh, external boost algorithm. This. These are the symbol we apply on some other model. Here we have directly used this. So I will share this data set and the script also with you. And uh, there are various uh, different libraries and different techniques to do this extreme boost. It's not a unique one. Okay, like other algorithm. These are the very small, small algorithm like the night base and the k nearest neighbors. And these are too much mathematical. There's a high mathematical concepts behind this. So we are not going in that um, depth in the mathematically because there is some uh, differentiation and so many things over there we have to do. So that is not um, legal here. But we you, we just know how does it work. Okay. Is there any doubt or something you would like to ask? Yes, sir. Radha Krishna, you bully. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any doubt? Any sir, query? doubt, doubt, no, yes, sir. But you know, this uh, you know, some organization is giving this data to us, and then what problem statement they will ask us, and then how we will in interpret, uh, you know, uh, by doing all this uh, exercise, how extreme, we can tell. Huh, extreme boost we use for uh, improving the performance of the model. We uh, use that for. Because the decision tree, if you direct apply somewhere, uh, uh, first you are supposing you are using the logistic regression. Uh, and then you want to improve the performance of this logistic regression. You are using the lace overage, whatever you are using over here. And then sir. you want more to improve the performance. Then you could use this extreme boost. Uh, extreme boost, uh, the, the final thing you have to, if you want to increase the performance point, 0 to 0.05 in this way. So this is the extreme boost, the last thing. When you have to uh, send your rocket in space. So there is the last moment, the extreme boosting we have to apply over there yeah. to throw it in the space. Yeah. So like that, this is the, this is just the algorithm. It, it's not a, we are not making any model. Okay. So, how to judge, you know, whether when we should apply this kind of booster hmm. uh, by, by looking at the data, how we can judge to, uh, you know, whether to apply or uh, directly decision tree we can. If we are getting that there is a too much overfitting in the data, uh -huh. it is giving us the good response with the training data and in spite of optimizing the model, uh, it is not uh, going down the overfitting. Okay, so it is not giving the more accuracy testing data. So then we apply this for uh, minimize the overfitting of the data. We use this algorithm. It has not been included in statistics up to now. And the sum of the algorithm are the based on mathematics basically. So it has not been included. In the, in the statistic, but we use it uh, as a mathematical model, this uh, algorithm is this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, what is that eta parameter when you were uh, using XGBoost function? There that was... The, e that is the learning rate, Aditya. Okay. Learning rate, if you keep slow, then it will minimize the overfitting of the model. If you read very fast, if you learn very fast, you will skip something. Does that right. make sense to you? Yes, yes. Right. So, so you, you said the default is a 0.3, you said, no, sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Default it is 0.3, it is between 0 to 1. Okay, sir. 
so we have to minimize it so if you slow learn the thing then you could better understand does that make sense to everyone yes so learning rate should be slow it should not be too much fast if you are going to improve the model if you are going to understand something then if you thoroughly read the thing just like a novel hai na novel so then uh, you could not grasp the thing there is some concepts and everything the novel is a different thing so there in the novel you should have the high learning rate okay does that make sense to you in the yeah. in the literature and this all you should have the high learning rate but in the yes. thing what you have to understand the science and the whatever the thing so this would be learning rate should be very little bit slow the speed what you are so this algorithm what do uh, it slow down the learning rate of our algorithm it, it, it uh, slow it learns it see the everything every and then it learns right right and apart from that uh, the independent Which you uh, does it require that it should follow normality because no no independent regression. independent we have not taken here in that you see that uh, as I earlier explained you we have developed one tree and then we are improving it we are improving that model here then what we do we we okay. put the predicted value instead of why we put the predicted value. Okay, we have not used the why in the you see in the whole uh, algorithm. I have not written the why anywhere. The target value I have given only the class of that. The two classes will be. Does it make sense to you? Yes. In the other decision tree, you have seen in the random forest. You have seen the other yeah. modeling. You have seen that there we 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 give the dependent variable. Right. So here here we have not given it. What is the is it is the simple model? It is not the basic one. As I explained in here also, uh, we don't count the basic one. Basic DT is this one, and this is the decision tree one we have prepared. This. Then decision tree two, the hundred iterations we are taking. Then means we have hundred times created the decision. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes. If I am taking one hundred four times, then one hundred four times I have created the that decision. Does that make sense to you? And we are yes, trying to get yes. the generalized model. In the generalized model, we see the low variance and the low bias. Okay. 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 So that's the thing. Yes. The whole concept is this. Yes. I'm not yes, going in the mathematical part because it will take very long time. Yeah, I have to explain so many concepts over there. Okay, there are okay. so many things. The first derivative and uh, so many things are there. Uh, so the notations, uh, some participants may be afraid by watching the notations of this all only the mathematical notations. What? What is this? Right. Has not uh, read the mathematics after twelve. Okay, right. so we are not going in that deep, but we have to just understand this thing. Oh, uh, it is the very very uh, popular algorithm in the, among data scientists, and the most of the questions are being asked to the algebraist in the interview. So you could uh, study this on the net. The more you study and you try to understand it. Um, they ask the question on that extreme group. Why does it work and how does it work? The same thing. The similar things they ask. Not the mathematical aspect they ask. Okay. Right. Right. They are also not that much technical. The person who asks me. Yes. Yes. They are right. not the professors basically. <laughs> right. They are just the data scientists and they are working uh, IT field. They don't go in that deep. Okay. Right, right. Understood. So, is there any other doubt? 
teman-teman. So tomorrow we will uh, do k nearest neighbor, which is our next algorithm. And then we have day after tomorrow, Friday, the last one, which is night base. Okay, these are the small small algorithms. Okay. Okay, sir. This is the major algorithm are the linear regression, logistic regression, Gaussian tree, and the random forest. These are the major ones. Okay. These are the subsidiary we use sometimes, support vector machine sometimes we use. And in the support, we tag this. Thing. Okay. So I wind up this today. Excuse me, sir. Okay, Radha Krishna ji. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so we wind yes, up sir. This, huh? Okay, sir. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.